things from the heart tonight as we move towards revival and as we pray about God preparing us and us identifying some things maybe in our, in our own lives, in our own heart. <clears throat> one, of the, one of the areas that typically that we need to deal with in our own life is the very one that we don't think we need to. That we want to just move right ahead and start looking at other areas. But I want to talk tonight just for a few minutes. I want to talk about our burden for other people. As we've been studying on Sunday nights in, in, uh, in different subjects, this past Sunday night we were looking at, at the fruit of the Spirit. And the first one that literally was listed there, okay, there in Ephesians chapter 5, is love. And we know that whenever God makes our dead heart alive, okay, he changes us on the inside. He don't just change us on the inside, but he changes how we see things, how we look at things. And his love is shown through us in our compassion for other people. Amen. People that we may have just the day before driven past as they walk down the highway and just saw them as a somebody else walking on the road. But because of what God does in us and puts in us, we recognize that individual, okay, after the fact as, hey, I don't know that guy. I don't know that girl. But that's a soul. It's not just a person. It's a soul. And they're going to spend eternity some one of two places, either heaven or hell. No in between. It's a certainty. It's absolute. It's one of the two places. And God begins to work in our heart about recognizing this in people. And he uses this to, 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 shall we say, grow a burden. Again, that compassion for others that we don't know. And I want to share with you tonight just, just, just two or three instances. Um, I know that I've shared one of those here with you before, but it's, it's, it's um, very striking. And it's been, it's been a while. And, and, and anyway, I'm going to share these with you. It's just, just kind of how the way, way people think or don't think people. And, it's, and, it's, and they're shocking, quite frankly. I, uh, there was a man and a woman lived down the road. They were a half mile from the church that I pastored there in Arkansas. And, you know, in these small rural areas, you know, people either know everybody or know pretty much, you know, they're connected somehow with friends or they know where they live, things of that nature. Everybody knew this couple. The first, the first time that, that I ever went to their home, they would have, they would have been in their mid-50s. Um, man, the woman, just nice as they could be. You know, just, just talk, talk, talk. If you had four hours, you, they, you was welcome to stay four hours. That's just kind of the way it was. And so I would go and just, just odd things happen and and uh, just just never really did get down to the just the, the gospel itself. Certainly there would be certain things that were talked about this, that, and other, but it was just, it was kind of strange. And I'd go back another three months later, whatever, with another man in their church or two, and um, I'd stop by and visit with them in the yard. And this went on there for, for, for about two years. And, uh, and so one of, our, one of the deacons, I told him, I said, I said, man, I got somebody we need to go see. And he said, uh, I got somebody we need to go see. And I said, well, who, who's yours? And I'll tell you who's mine. So we both had the same person. <laughs> he said, man, he said, I can't get them off my mind. I said, how long has this been going on? He said, at least a week. I said, same thing here, so God's doing something. So we went. And I told him, I said, David, I said, I said, man, you know this family as well as I do. You've known them longer than I have. And if the Lord leads you to speak, you speak. And when you're speaking, I'll pray. And when I'm, you're, I'm, you're speaking, I, you know, I'm speaking, you pray. So we were there, oh, probably 30 minutes or so. I'm just, it's been, this has been several years. And I had, I had brought with me a couple of different gospel tracts. 
And as we were kind of talking, I just got up and I walked over and I laid two over there by him. And I walked over and laid two over there by her. I noticed she picked hers up. You know, she's looking, she's thumbing through. He glanced down, but we just kept talking. So I got to a point there, and, and, um, and, I, and I referred to those tracts. And I told him, I said, I want to leave you something to read. And I said, but tonight, I want, I want us to talk about eternity. Where are you going to spend eternity? And we did. And for the next probably 15 minutes, it just, things went really, really well. And we got to the point there and I'm actually sharing the gospel and, and, and going through step by step. And I get to the end there and I asked them, I said, do you understand that there's only one way you can, you can go to heaven according to what God says? And I said a few other things. I said, would you like to do this tonight? And the lady she was sitting out on the edge of her, it's a big old chair. She's sitting out, by that time, she's sitting out on the very edge of it. And she said, yes, she said, this is, and all of a sudden, he cut her off. He said, no, preacher. He said, uh, we might do something later on, but tonight's not tonight. I watched her, and she just slid back in her chair and folded her arms, and it was over with. I was at that church 19 years and 42 weeks. Precisely. From the time that I left that church, that was probably 12 years before I left. We never got back in that house again. I'm not saying that there'll never be another opportunity for that couple. But I, what I do know is that something changed there that night when they said no to God. And again, for some 10 or 12 years, we never had another opportunity to talk with him. I, uh, that man's brother was in our church and, um, and he was actually leading music at the time when, that, when, this, when this happened. And, um, and he Anyway, just a little, little different kind of a family. But so that happened on a Thursday night. Well, on Sunday morning, I was waiting for him when he pulled up in the parking lot. I wanted to talk with him about his brother. And so I told him what I just told you. <coughs> and his response to me was, is, hmm, I thought he was already saved. And he just turned around and walked off. Less than a year, he left our church and went somewhere else. He never showed any compassion whatsoever for his own brother. So I'm just going to say out loud, I don't know if he's even saved. Okay? If you can't show any compassion over the loss, and it being a family member, if it doesn't move you in any way, you, 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 need, to, you need to check on some things. There's another lady who lived down the road from the church. Sweet, sweet lady. And I had talked to her husband a time or two out in the yard and and uh, he would he'd be sitting out in his chair and we'd just kind of chit chat a little bit, but he wasn't he wasn't some people are easily approachable and some aren't. Yeah. You know, y'all know that. And we would talk here, this and that. So anyway I knew that he was sick. They had mentioned it at church. And um so next thing I know, somebody gets a hold of me and tells me that they're at the VA hospital down in Little Rock. And uh, so I went up there, and, and um, he, had, he had been um, diagnosed with, and I may not be saying this completely right, but what I remember is non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And they said he just had just a few weeks to live. And so I went in, and I, Talked, talked with them, and talked with them, and, and, uh, and he was he was much more approachable laying in that hospital bed. Yeah. But he just it just got to a point there, and, and just talking with him about the gospel, that it just it just it just like hit the wall. Boom! Yeah. It wouldn't go any further. Yeah. But she was paying close attention. I mean, she was 
Chief, and after I prayed and left, um, I walked out. She, she, went, she followed me out in the hall. And I asked her, I said, and, and I called her name. I'm not going to do that. I'm not, we're going, this is being recorded. I'm not going to do that. But I called her name and I asked her, and I said, uh, I shared the gospel with your husband. I said, but you're here too. And do you know if you die today that you're going to heaven? She said, no, I don't. She said, I'm, she told me, she said, I'm lost. Now this, this, this is again, this too has been some 15 years ago. And I think about this all the time. And you're going to think when you hear what I'm about to say, unless you remember this from before, you're going to think that you didn't hear right, but you are. Just listen. And I looked at her and I said, if you know for sure that you're lost, I said, I've given you the answer. I've told you what you need to do to be saved, and that's only one way. And I said, you don't have to wait to be at church. We can take care of that right here in this hallway. Amen. She looked at me and she said, preacher, I can't do that. And I said, why? Now, I'm going to tell you, I had a, I don't know if a feeling's the right thing. I just knew something wasn't quite right <laughs> in the way that she said, preacher, I can't do that. And here's what she told me. She said, I'm lost, and my husband's lost. She said, I, would, I feel guilty in accepting Christ and going to heaven knowing that he's in hell. Three days later, that man was dead. In talking with her over and over again, and she came to our church you know, after a few months where she actually moved with her daughter to Nebraska for a little while, and they came back. She started coming to church again. But in talking with her over and over, whether it be at the church or there on her porch, there was never another opportunity where she even was remotely interested. Yeah. Folks, God has a deadline. Right. And God does, in his sovereignty, he does give opportunities and he does, he does convict their heart. But he does not promise that he'll do it over and over and over again. I don't I don't understand that. I, I certainly know that some people get more than more than one chance or two or ten. But that's not true with everyone. And it's not promised for every single person. And a person's heart can grow cold and, and wax cold and get hardened to God Himself. And I've watched it over and over. But I've never forgotten what she said to me when she said that she would feel guilty if she was in heaven knowing that her husband was in hell. And I just, I had thought of that many, many times. And those are, those are just a couple of, of, of those instances that I wanted to share with you tonight. That the, the, the story itself is, is not that important. What is important is you, your heart, and your burden for other people. You know, there's not a, there's not a child, I don't believe there's a child of God that's ever lived that God has not burdened their heart for somebody else's life. Okay? Because Jesus Christ, as we live our lives in obedience to him, in following him, as we saw this past Sunday night, in walking in the spirit, we are an ambassador for Christ. We are representing Jesus Christ before other people, okay, so that they can see him. Now, that in turn, as we think about that, that is kind of like a mirror showing us all the things maybe we shouldn't do. It's, it's, it's incredibly important for us to pray for God's wisdom as we speak to other people. We can push a little bit too hard. We can say a little bit too much. Okay. And so obviously the answer, the question is in, in, in that type thing is how do we know? Okay. How do we know how far to go in talking with someone? How do we know when we get to a point to back off? Let me tell you this. You are not going to live your life and go through this thing without making some mistakes. I, you know, I didn't tell you about none of my mistakes. Okay? They're there. But when we, when we stay in the Word, 
when that word is our absolute standard and we pray and call upon God's name and for wisdom in talking with someone, if we're, we'll be, if we, as we're in obedience, as we walk in the Spirit, we'll be sensitive to the hand of God as we deal with other people. Okay. Where you're at doesn't necessarily confine you to your, your words to what you can say. And what I mean by that is when God opens the door wide open, you just keep on walking through the door. Right. Amen. Okay. You may suddenly find yourself on, man, I can't believe this is going so good. Should I stop or I'll mess it up? You just keep going until God shuts your mouth. Right. Again, paying attention to the words that they say, but trusting in the word of God that you yourself have read, that you yourself have studied, and you yourself have prayed. I, uh, <clears throat> I recognize that not, not, not everybody is able to just walk up to anyone, no matter where they are, and start witnessing. I understand? Okay. <clears throat> you use and you do where God sends you what he leads you to do as he pricks your heart. Okay? But pray. Pray for God to put somebody on there. If you don't have anybody on your heart right now, pray for God to burden your heart for someone. Amen. But that's a loaded prayer, folks. That's a loaded prayer. Because there'll be nights of tears. There'll be prayer times with, with tears but calling upon God's wisdom. But folks, listen to me. God's going to use that. That's right. He's not just, he, you're not a puppet that he's just giving you those emotions just to dangle you around and watch how you, 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 you react. He's going to use it. Okay. One of the greatest areas, if not the greatest, Brother Bill said it right the other day, well, revival is, is, is about the church itself, us, but it extends. It extends. And certainly part of that extension is us inviting other people where we see salvation. That, that's an extension of that burden, an extension of that love. All that's going to happen. But first and foremost will be us seeing a lack of burden for other people, okay, or a greater burden for other people that we have to deal with in our own heart. Job, and I don't know any Job's, but Joe down there, down 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 from you that, that lives down from you or, or works with you or whatever the case may be, um, you may not know him very well at all or anything like that, but his name keeps he just keeps coming back to your mind. Coming back to your mind. You wake up two o'clock in the morning and your very first thought is Joe. Very first thought is Joe. And all these things. And that's God in, in, again in working and putting starting that burden on you and you thinking about that individual caring about him. Folks, I've been uh, probably in my 32 years of preaching, I've probably, if the churches that I've pastored all told, had, had probably about 50 to 55 different revivals. Most, most, years, most years to a year. So that's where we're getting to that number. Revivals don't just happen because you put them out there on the sign out in the yard. That's right. Revivals don't just happen because you put it on your calendar. This is the day where we're going to have this. this that, that's, that, it doesn't happen. What I'm about to tell you is I'm telling you not to discourage you. But I, want, but I want it to show you something. And I'll get to the something here in just a minute. In those 55 different revivals, give or take a few, of all the years. I can only really remember one real revival. One. So well, how long did it last, Bridget? A week? A month? It lasted four years. Four years. All the revivals that we've had at, 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 at the churches that have passed had been good revivals as far as the preaching, the turnout, 
all this, that, and other, but as far as a lasting result upon the church wide, upon hearts, and you're changing people's lives, and people getting on fire for God, people walking in the love of Jesus Christ, people that can legitimately say that I love the Lord my God with all my heart, all my mind, all my soul, I've only seen it one time. One time. You see, you and I can stop revival. We can make sure it don't happen by our own heart. Grieving the Holy Spirit of God. That's why you hear people say through the years that revival has to start right here first. Okay. Because it has to be in my heart for God to revive my heart. And I used to hear preachers say that years and years ago and I say, man, there's something wrong with you preacher if you have to be revived. There's not a preacher anywhere that don't need God to move mightily in their heart and lives. Doing, I'm doing uh, on the 17th of March at, at the morning service I'll leave immediately after the morning service here headed to Arkansas <coughs> up close to Little Rock and I'll barely get there in time for the service that night. That preacher called me yesterday and he's crying. I've been to that church. Brother Jim Moss, when he was in revival there, I've been to that church probably 15, 18 times um, through the years. I know, I know a lot of those people there at that church. And I know this preacher, Brother Robert Alberson. I love that man like he's my brother. But he loves the people of his church. He's a, he's a part-time. He's a bivocation. He's a farmer. He's been pastoring there for about 20 years or more. And he loves those people dearly. The, the bedroom that I stay in when I go there will be directly above his bedroom. And I heard that man weeping at night. Him and his wife weeping at night in their bedroom praying for the people of that church. He calls me and he said, Brother Kyle, he said, our church needs revival so bad. Our church, and then he said, he said, I told you our church needs it, but I need it bad. Yeah. Typically, as we approach revival, no matter who we are, there's a decision in our own heart that we have to at least acknowledge. One of two things. Do I need revival or am I okay? Now listen to me. Listen to me carefully. Just forget number two. Because we all need revival. Revival is ushered in on our knees. And why do I say that? Because revival is a result of absolute and complete obedience and humility, humbling ourselves before a holy God. That's how revival gets in. Other than that, it's just like him walking up to the door. God's not going to force that door open for revival. We have to let him in for it. So with that, I'm fixing to close in prayer. Won't you pray along with me? Yes, ma'am. Sure. When, on that first couple that you were talking about, when um, when she was ready to accept Christ, mm -hmm. and he said no, mm -hmm. did that quench the Holy Spirit from her for a while, or? I'm going to say yes, and. and the reason I say that is not just based on the next few minutes that we were in there and the years to follow. Right. That's now, what she should have done, you already know. Yeah. She should have looked at him and said, you ain't talk, thinking for me, I won't go to heaven. Yeah. And got it took care of. <laughs> but, she, but she didn't. And over the years and years and years that followed, she grew cold too. So when, when the Spirit gets in, in, in a person by another person. Yeah. Does, does it, um, I mean, 
I have been in that situation. And later on down the line, um, the person got saved. Right. Yeah, well, yes, it's, it's absolutely, that doesn't mean it's over. Absolutely. That just means that right then, yeah, and I, and I, and I continue to pray yeah. for that couple of the, that same situation. God, use somebody to get back in that door again, speaking to burden their hearts again. Oh, yes. That doesn't mean it's over with. Amen. That's right. Amen. It just meant that for right then, for that time, right then and there. Okay. So, but let's go, Lord, word prayer. And let's, let's, again, not only for revival, but folks, we, we need to prepare our hearts for, for, for the Lord's Supper as well. As we examine, as we look for unconfessed sin and just yielding ourselves to God. Father, we know. God, we recognize that a burden for lost people is important. Us living your compassion in the eyes of others is important. Being real. God, I pray, Lord, that we would have a, a heart, Lord, that, that our attitudes would not hold anything back from you. But God, that we would have the, the attitude, Father, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Father. Use me. Use me. God, I pray, Lord, that we would we would remember in prayer, our prayer time with you in praying for wisdom. God, that in, in, then, in, then in prayer in our Bible study, God, we, we, we're able to, Father, gather wisdom and use it, Lord, in our lives. Father, I, I expect that every single person in this room knows someone that's lost. And if not lost, someone that we're deeply burdened for, even if they are saved, that they've gotten away from you. God, we may we know that in our minds. We know that in our heart. But God, I pray that you increase our burden. Father, we sometimes pray for, for someone else, God, that you make them miserable until they make the decision they should make. But God, would we dare ask you to make us miserable? God, with our burden that we that we that we not get any rest, Father, until Lord, they're saved or until that situation changed, but that we will continue to be faithful in prayer for them. Dear God, I want to see revival. Not just so I can say that, well, I've seen it twice. But God, because of the lives and families, Lord, that can be changed. This community around this church. Dear God, even in, even in calling upon you for revival, there are things, Lord, that, that we don't quite know how to put in words. But God, as you have taught us even in this last lesson, the Holy Spirit does, that he'll take those burdens and those groanings of our heart, God, to your throne. And God, we just ask you, to, Lord, not, not in the sense of a, an emotional high because I don't know what, but God, for a revival that's lasting and seeing it in other people's lives and people, Lord, that are the God that are sold out for you and on fire with you and fall in love with you and it continuing and continuing. God, we pray for Brother Jim again. Lord, every message, all five. Father, I pray, Lord, it comes directly from your throne. But God, it doesn't do any good if we sit at the house. We need to be here to hear. And God, I just pray right now that you have a mighty, mighty victory. Certainly we pray for souls to be saved. God, I believe that we're going to see souls saved. 
Hearts change. Lives change. And God, we give you praise. Go with us now this week. Give us safety. Give us wisdom. Give us words to say, God, in situations that you put us in paths of people that you place us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.